Dramatis Personae of The Family of Love by Thomas Middleton, Thomas Decker, and Lord Ingberry. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Dramatis Personae. Geraldine. Read by Thomas Peter. Maria. Read by K. Hand. Glister. Read by Brad Philippone. Mistress Glister. Read by Sonia. Mistress Page. Read by Lian Yao. Purge. Read by Alan Mapstone. Lip Salve. Read by Rob Board. Goodgen. Read by Andrew Utley. Dry Fat. Read by Peter Tucker. Club. Read by Todd. Shrimp read by Scarlet G. Periwinkle read by Stoopy. Bile read by Nemo. Within read by Sandra. Narrated by David Lawrence. End of Dramatis Personae. Act One of The Family of Love by Thomas Middleton, Thomas Decker, and Lord Ingberry. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Prologue If, for opinion hath not blazed his fame, nor expectation filled the general round, you deem his labours slight, you both confound your graver judgment and his merits. Impartial hearing fits judicious spirits, nor let the fruit of many an hour fall by envy's tooth or base detraction's gall, both which are tokens of such abject spirits, which, wanting worth themselves, hate others' merits, or else of such which once made great by fame repine at those which seek tain the same. From both we know all truer judgments free, to them our muse with blushing modesty patiently to her entreats their favour which done with judgment's praise or else dislike the labour act one scene one a gallery in glister's house enter glister mistress glister and maria tricks and shows protestations with men are like tears with women for gut ere the cheek be dry Gerardine is a gentleman, his lands be in statutes, he is not for thee, nor thou for him. He is a gallant, and young thoughts be most unconstant. Yet young vines yield most wine, but old vines the best. Believe not these great breached gallants, they love for profit, not for affection. If he brings thee to a fool's paradise, he will forsake thee. Which fortune God send my enemy? love is a cold heat a bitter sweet a pleasure full of pain a huge loss and no gain why shouldst thou love him only words cannot force what destiny hath sealed who can resist the influence of his stars or give a reason why he loves or hates since our affections are not ruled by will but will by our affections tis blasphemy against love's most sacred deity to ax why we do love since tis his only power that sways all our affections all things which be beasts birds men gods pay him their fealty tut love is an idle fantasy bred by desire nursed by delight and humour that begins his dominion in leo the lion the sign of the heart and ends in aries the ram the sign of the head his power is to stir the blood pricks up the flesh fills all the body with a libidinous humour and is indeed the overture of all ladies which to prevent i have banished Geraldine, your dearly beloved in my house and as for you since i am your guardian by my brother's last will i will sequester you from all other rooms in my house save this gallery and your upper chamber till in discretion i shall find it convenient to enlarge you my body you may circumscribe confine and keep in bounds but my unlimited love extends itself beyond all circumscription believe me maria i have known the natures of divers of these gallants 
if they possess the unlimited love of us women in never so ample manner without the society of the body i know how soon their love vadeth young man's love is like ivy it must have somewhat to cleave to or it never prospers love is like fasting days but the body is like flesh days and tis our english gallant's fashion to prefer a morsel of flesh before all the fasting days in the whole year enter vile the news with you vile on it like your worship here's club master purge the apothecary's prentice come to invite you my mistress and mistress maria to supper on to see master jardine's will seal tell club my wife and myself will be there but maria shall not come exit vile there must be your sweetheart's parting feast now he perceives no access to my house he will to see a good riddance if he returns not you forsooth are his heir that's not much amiss yet there may be tricks i will not be overreached come to your chamber where till my return you shall be in safe custody exit with mistress glister o oh, silly men which seek to keep in awe women's affections which can know no law maria ascends scene two a street before glister's house enter gerardine lipsolve and gudgeon now by the horns of cupid's bow which hath been the bane to many a tall citizen i think there be no finer fools under heaven than we men when we are lovers how thou goest crying up and down with thy arms across for a wife which hadst thou she'd cross both arms head and heart dost not yet know the old saying a wife brings but two good days that is her wedding day and death day believe him Geraldine. he speaks now gospel a man may take more wife with one hand than he's able to put away with ten Geraldine. a wife is such a cross that all married men would most gladly be rid of and yet such a cross that all bachelors would gladly be creeping to profane not thus the sacred name of love you libertines who never knew the joys nor precious thoughts of two consenting hearts didst ever see the true picture of a lover i can give thee the hieroglyphic and this it is a man standing naked a wench tickling him on the left side with a feather and pricking him under the right side with a needle the allegory as i take it is this that at the first we are so overjoyed with obtaining a wife that we conceit no heaven like to the first night's lodging and that's the signification of the left side for wives always in the night take the left side place but sir now come to the needle on the right side that's the daytime wherein she commands then sir she has a certain thing called tongue ten times more sharp than a needle and that at the least displeasure a man must have shot quite through him gramercy's lips of my neat courtier but sirrah Geraldine, be thyself sociable and free leave not thy native soil for giglot a wench who in her wit is proud in her smile deceitful in her hate revengeable and in nothing but her death acceptable i'll tell thee there's no creature more desirous of an honest name and worse keeps it than a woman dost hear follow this song and if ever thou forsake thy country for a wagtail let me be whipped to death with ladies hair laces let's hear that worthy song gentle master lipsolve observe <clears throat> now if i list will i love no more no longer wait upon a gill since every place now yields a wench if one will not another will and if what i have heard be true then young and old and all will do 
how dost thou like this man no more no more this is the chamber which confines my love this is the abstract of the spacious world within it holds a gem so rich so rare that art or nature never yet could set a valued price to her unvalued worth unvalued worth <laughs> why she's but a woman and they are windy turning veins love light as chaff which when our nourishing grains are winnowed from them and constantly they fly at the least wind of passion a woman's eye can turn itself with quick dexterity and in each wanton glass can comprehend their sundry fancy suited to each friend tut their loves are all compact of levity even like themselves nil muliere levius tut man every one knows their worth when they are at a rack rent in the term time they bear as great a price as wheat when transportations are maria appears above at a window peace let's draw near the window and listen if we may hear her debarred of liberty oh that this flesh could like swift moving thoughts transfer itself from place to place unseen and undissolved then should no iron ribs or churlish flint divide my love and me dear geraldine despite of chance or guardian's tyranny i'd move within thy orb and thou in mine she'd move within thy orb and thou in hers blood she talks bawdy to herself Gudgeon, stand close but in vain do i proclaim my grief when air and walls can yield me no relief the walls are the more stony-hearted then peace good gudgeon gape not so loud come thou my best companion thou art sensible and canst my wrongs reiterate thou and i will make some mirth in spite of tyranny the black-browed knight drawn in her pitchy wain in starry spangled pride rides now o'er heaven now is the time when stealing minutes tell the stole delight joyed by all faithful lovers now loving souls contrive both place and means for wished pastimes only i am pent within the closure of this fatal wall deprived of all my joys my dear maria be comforted in this the frame of heaven shall sooner cease to move bright phoebus steeds leave their diurnal race and all that is forsake the natural being ere i forget thy love who's that protests so fast thy ever vowed servant geraldine oh by your vows it seems you'd fain get up ay and ride too i would most loved maria i knew it he that to get up to a fair woman will stick to vow and swear may be accounted no man but tell me why hast thou chose this hour to visit me which nor the day nor night can claim but both or neither why in this twilight camest thou to avoid suspicious eyes i come dear love to take my last farewell fitting this hour which no bright day will claim nor pitchy night an hour fit to part conjoined souls since that my native soil will not afford my wished and best content i will forsake it and prove more strange to it than it to me in time's swift course all things shall find event be it good or ill and destinies do grant that most preposterous courses often gain what labour and direct proceedings miss what thou forsake me then let first blessed life forsake me be thou constant my absence may procure thy more enlarge and then desire's conceit is quick i apprehend thee be thou as loyal as i constant prove and time shall knit our mutual knot of love wear this my love's true pledge throws it down i need not wish i know thou what return nor will i say thou mayest conceal thyself being returned till i may make escape and visit thee I prithee, love, attempt not to ascend my chamber window by a laddered rope. The entrance is too narrow except this post, which may with ease. Yet that is dangerous. I prithee, do it not. I hear some call. Farewell. My constant love, let after actions tell. Exit above. O oh, perfection of women! A plague of such perfection! How she woos! 
by negatives shows thee what to do under colour of dissuasion she's truly virtuous tut man outward appearance is no authentic instance of the inward desires women have sharp falcon's eyes and can soar aloft but keep them like falcons from flesh and they soon stoop to a gaudy lure why then you know women are admirable angels but angels make them admirable devils my love's chaste smile to all the world doth speak of spotless innocence women's smiles are more of custom than of courtesy women are creatures their hearts and they are full of holes apt to receive but not retain affection thou wilt to-morrow thou sayest be gone if thou wilt know the worst of a country's marry before thou goest for if thou canst endure a cursed wife never care what company thou comest in come merry gallants will you associate me to my cousin purges the apothecaries and take part of my parting feast to-night oh his wife is of the family of love i'll thither perhaps i may prove of the fraternity in time will thither that's flat exeunt scene three a room in purge's house enter mistress purge what club club is club within there enter club mistress i pray what said master dr glister will he come i sent word i would for i was but to carry a diet to one of his patients what call you her she that paints the daytimes and looks fair and fresh on the outside but in the night time is filthier than the inside of a bocadaro and is indeed far more unsavoury to those that know her forsooth went he to her i had a receipt for the grincombs in his hand and i said i would take that in his way tis well and what guest besides him and his wife will be here at supper the first in my account is master geraldine your cousin master dr glister and his wife master dryfat the merchant master lipsal the courtier master gungeon the gallant and their pages these i take will be your full number then belike my room shall be stuffed with courtiers and gallants to-night of all men i love not these gallants they'll prate much but do little they are people most uncertain they use great words but little sense great beards but little wit great breeches but no money that was the last thing they swore away be like they cannot fetch it again with swearing for if they could there's not a page of theirs but would be as rich as a monarch there's nothing mistress that is sworn out of date that returns their first oath in times past was by the mass and that they have sworn quite away then came they to their faith as by my faith tis so that in a short time was sworn away too for no man believes now more than a sees then they swore by their honesties and that mistress you know is sworn quite away after their honesties was gone then they came to their gentility and swore as they were gentlemen and their gentility they swore away so fast that they had almost sworn away all the ancient gentry out of the land which indeed are scarce missed for that yeomen and fathers sons with the help of a few welshmen have undertook to supply their places that at the last they came to silver and their oath was by the cross of this silver and swore so fast upon that that now they have scarce left them a cross for to swear by and what do they swear by now their money is gone why by blank and god refuse them and can they not as well say men refuse them as god refuse them no mistress for men especially citizens and rich men have refused their bonds and protestations already enter purge tis well see how supper goes forward and that my shoes be very well blacked against i go to the family exit club now sweet chick where hast thou been in troth la i am not well i had thought to have spent the morning at the family but now i am resolved to take pills and therefore i pray thee desire dr glister that he would minister to me in the morning thy will is known and this for answer say 
tis fit that wise men should their wives obey and now sweet duck no i have been for my cousin gerardine's will and have it he has given thee a legacy but the total is maria's enter glister mistress glister and dryfat master doctor your wife and master dryfat are most welcome now were my cousin gerardine and master lipsalve here our number were complete is this frantic will done will master gerardine to see let me tell you i am no whit sorry let such as will be headstrong bite on the bridle tis here master doctor all is worth is maria's and locked in a trunk which by to-morrow sun shall be delivered to your custody methinks twere a reasonable match to bestow your niece on master gerardine he is a most hopeful gentleman and his revenue such that having your niece's portion to clear it of all encumbrances twill maintain them both in a very worthy degree tut you are master dryfat the merchant your skill is greater in coney skins and wool packs than in gentlemen his lands be in statutes you merchants were wont to be merchant staplers but now gentlemen have gotten up the trade for there is not one gentleman amongst twenty but his land be engaged in twenty statute staple enter lipsalve gerardine and gudgeon let every man his humour have i do at none repine i never regard whose wench i kiss nor who doth the like by mine the indifferent minds i hold still best whatever does be fool for she that will do with me and thee will be a wench for all and how goes the squares your stay gentlemen does wrong to a great many good stomachs your suppers expect you and we are suppers and from what good exercise come you three from a play where we saw most excellent samson excel the whole world in gate carrying was it performed by the youths by youths why i tell thee we saw samson and i hope tis not for youths to play samson believe it we saw samson bear the town gates on his neck from the lower to the upper stage with that life and admirable accord that it shall never be equalled unless the whole new livery of porters set their shoulders fie fie tis pity young gentlemen can bestow their time no better this playing is not lawful for i cannot find that either plays or players were allowed in the prime church of Thesus by the elders <laughs> i think she tickled you there cousin gerardine shall the will be read before supper before supper i beseech you ay ay before supper aside for when these women's bellies be full their tongues will be soon at rest well master doctor pity the state of a poor gentleman it is in you to stay his journey and make him and yourself happy in his choice hold you content shall this will be read it shall read you good master lipsalve command silence then silence lipsalve reading the will in the name of god amen know all men by these presents that i gerardine being strong of body and perfect in sense that's false there's no lover in his perfect sense peace dry fat do give and grant to maria glister daughter of john glister and niece to dr glister physician all my leases lands chattels goods and movables whatsoever oh, this is stark naught you cannot give away your movables for mistress doctor and mistress purge claim both shares in your movables by reason of their legacies that's true for their legacies must go out of your movables i'll put it in all my movables these following legacies being paid do so good master lipsolve lipsolve after writing 
Tis done. I pray read only the legacies, for supper stays. Well, the legacies. Reads. First I give to my cousin, Mistress Purge, a fair large standing... What's this? Oh, cup. A fair large standing cup with a clothes stool. Tis not so, tis not so. I cry you mercy, a close cover tis. Reads. To Mistress Doctor I give a fair bodkin of gold with two orient pearls attending the same, all which are in my trunk to be delivered to the keeping of Maria, in witness, etc. Is this your will? Tis. To it with your hand and seal. Gerardine signs and seals the will. How is it, Chick? I must have the standing cup. And Mr. Glester, the bodkin. Right, sweet duck. I pray, gentlemen, put to your hands. Come, your fists, gentlemen, your fists. Gerardine, while the witnesses sign the will. Mistress Glister, I found you always more flexible to understand the estate of a poor gentleman than your husband was willing. Therefore I have thought it a point of charity to reveal the wrongs you sustain by your husband's looseness. Let me tell you in private that the doctor cuckolds purge oftener than he visits one of his patients. What he spares from you he spends lavishly on her. These pothecaries are a kind of panders. Look to it. If he keep Maria long close, it is for some lascivious end of his own. She is his niece. Tut, these doctors have tricks. Your niceness is such that you can endure no polluted shoes in your house. Take heed lest you make you a bod before your time. Look to it. Come, our hands are testimonies to thy follies. Shalls now to supper? We'll have a health go round to thy voyage. Aye. And to all that forswear marriage and can be content with other men's wives. Of which consort you two are grounds. One touches the bass, and the other tickles the minikin. But to our cheer, come, gentles, let's away. The roast meets in consumption by our stay. Exeunt. End of Act One. Act Two of The Family of Love by Thomas Middleton, Thomas Decker, and Lording Barry. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Act Two, Scene One, A Room in Purge's House. Enter Purge. The grey-eyed morning braves me to my face and calls me sluggard. Tis time for tradesmen to be in their shops, for he that tends well his shop and hath an alluring wife with a graceful waddy alack shall be sure to have good doings. And good doings is that that crowns so many citizens with the horns of abundance. My wife, by ordinary course, should this morning have been at the family but now her soft pillow hath given her counsel to keep her bed master doctor should indeed minister to her to whose pills she is so much accustomed that now her body looks for them as duly as the moon shakes off the old and borrows new horns i smile to myself to hear our knights and gallants say how they gull us citizens when indeed we gull them or rather they gull themselves here they come in term time hire chambers and perhaps kiss our wives well what lose i by that god's blessing on's heart i say still that makes much of my wife for they were very hard favoured that none could find in's heart to love but ourselves. Drugs would be dog cheap, but for my private, well practised doctor and such customers. Tut! Jealousy is a hell. And they that will thrive must utter their wares as they can, and wink at small faults. Exit. Scene two. A street. Enter Glister. 
the tedious night is past and the jocund morn looks more lively and fresh than an old gentlewoman's glazed face in a new periwig by this time my humorous lover is at gravesend and i go with more joy to fetch his trunk than ever the valiant trojans did to draw in the grecian jade his god shall into the walls of my troy and be offered to a face more lovely than ever was that thrice ravished helen yet with such caution that no danger shall happen to me exit scene three another street enter lipsolve and shrimp Meeting Gudgeon and Periwinkle. Master Lipsalve, welcome within ken. We two are so nearly linked that if thou beest absent but one two hours, thy acquaintance grows almost mouldy in my memory. And thine fly blown in mine. How dost thou do? Fellow page, I think our acquaintance runs low too. But if it run not all the leads, let's set it a tilt and give em some dregs to their mouldy fly-blown compliments no rather let's pierce the rundlets of our running heads and give em a neat cup of wagship to put down their courtship courtship cartship for the tongues of complimenters run on wheels but mark em they have not done yet and if faith how it Methinks thou hast been a long vagrant. The rogation hath been long indeed. Therefore we may salute as ceremoniously as lawyers when they meet after a long vacation, who, to renew the discontinued state tale, they stretch it out with such length that whilst they greet before, their clients kiss them behind. If his nose were put in the remainder of that state tale, he would say twere an unsavoury one. I wonder why many men go so at the law. I'll tell thee, because they themselves have neither law or conscience. But what news now? How stands the state of things at Brussels? Faith, weak and limber, weak and limber, nothing but pride and double dealing. Virtue is vices lackey beggars suck like horse leeches at the heart of bounty and leave him so tired and spur galled that he can be no longer ridden with honesty well fare the city yet their virtue rides a cock horse cherished and kept warm in good stables and fox fur and with the breath of his nostrils drives pride and covetousness before him like own shadow beggars have whipping cheer bounty obliges men to it and liberality gives money for scripts and scrolls, sealed with strong arms and heraldry to outlive mortality. Love there will see the last man born, never give over while there's an arrow in the quiver. Now we talk of love, I do know not far hence so good a subject for that humour, that if she would wear but the standing collar and her things in fashion, our ladies in the court were but brown sugar candy, as gross as grocery to her she's not so sweet as a apothecary shop is she a plague on you are you so good a scent aside for my life he's my rival her name begins with mistress purge does it not true the only comet of the city ay if she would let her rough stream out a little wider but I'm sure she is ominous to me. She makes civil wars and insurrections in the state of my stomach. I had thought to have bound myself from love, but her purging comfits makes me loose-bodied still. What? Has she ministered to thee, then? Faith some lectury or so. Aye, I fear she takes too much of that lectury to stoop to love. It keeps her body soluble from sin. She is not troubled with carnal crudities, nor the binding of the flesh. Thou hast sounded her, then, belike? Not I. I am too shallow to sound her. She's out of my element. If I show passion and discourse of love to her, she tells me I am wide from the right scope. She says she has another object and aims at a better love than mine. Oh, that's her husband. No, no, she speaks pure devotion. She's impenetrable. No gold or oratory, 
no virtue in herbs nor no physic will make her love more is the pity i say that fair women should prove saints before age had made them crooked aside tis my luck to be cross still but i must not give over the chase come hither boy while i think on't lipsalve talks apart to shrimp faith friend lipsalve i perceive you would fain play with my love a pure creature tis for whom i have sought every angle of my brain but either she scorns courtiers as most of them do because they are given to boast of their doings or else she's exceeding straight laced therefore to prevent this smell smock i'll to my friend dr glister a man exquisite in art magic who hath told me of many rare experiments available in this case farewell friend lipsalve adieu honest gregory frequent my lodging i have a veal de gambo and good tobacco exit gudgeon and periwinkle thou wilt do this feat boy else knock my head and my paint together away then bid him bring his measure with him exit shrimp Geraldine is travelled and i must be cast into his mould my flesh grows proud and maria's a sweet wench etc but yet i must not let fall my suit with mistress perch lest sede vacante my friend gudgeon join issue i'd rather to my learned doctor for a spell for i have a fire in my liver burns like hell exit scene four a room in glister's house enter mistress glister and maria i pray let's have no polluted feet nor rheumatic chaps enter the house i shall have my floor look more greasy shortly than one of your inn of court dining tables and now to you good niece i bend my speech let me tell you plainly you are a fool to be lovesick for any man longer than he is in your company are you so ignorant in the rules of courtship to think any one man to bear all the prick and praise i tell thee be he never so proper there is another to second him let rules of courtship be authentic still to such as do pursue variety but unto those whose modest thoughts do tend to honoured nuptials and a regular life as far from show of niceness as from that of impure thoughts all other objects seem of no proportion balanced with esteem of what their souls affect no marvel sure you should regard these men with such reverend opinion there's few good faces and fewer graces in any of them if one among a multitude have a good pair of legs he never leaves riding the ring till he has quite marred the proportion nay some as i have heard wanting lineaments to their liking and calf to support themselves are fain to use art and supply themselves with quilted calves which oftentimes in revelling fall about their ankles and for their behaviour wit and discourse except some few that are travelled it is as imperfectious and silly as your scholars new come from the university by this light i think we lose part of our happiness when we make these weathercocks our equals disgrace not that for which our sect was made society and nuptials above these joys which lovers taste when their conjoined lips suck forth each other's souls the earth the air yea gods themselves know none elysium's sweet ay all that bliss which poets pens describe are only known when soft and amorous folds entwine the core of two united lovers where what they wish they have yet still desire and sweets are known without satiety enter vile here's club forsooth and his fellow prentice have brought master geraldine's trunk let them come in if their feet be clean exit vile so then your best beloved is gone fair weather after him all thy passions go with him we comfort thyself wench in a better choice his love to thee would have been of no longer continuance than the untrussing of his hose then why shouldst thou pine for such a one maria aside she's foolish sure with what imperfect phrase and shallow wit she answers me 
enter club and another apprentice with a trunk honest club welcome is this master geraldine's trunk he is gone then ay indeed mistress glister he is departed this transitory city but his whole substance is here enclosed which by command we here deliver to your custody to the use of mistress maria according to the tenor of the premises place it here my honest club well done and how does thy mistress was she at the family to-day club spits spit not good club i cannot abide it not to-day forsooth she hath overcharged herself and her memory she means to use a moderation and take no more than she can make use of and i prithee club what kind of creatures are these familists thou art conversant with them what are they with reverence be it spoken they are the most accomplished creatures under heaven in them is all perfection as how good club omitting their outward graces i'll show you only one instance which includes all others they love their neighbours better than themselves not than themselves club yes better than themselves for they love them better than their husbands and husband and wife are all one therefore better than themselves this is logic but tell me does she not endeavour to bring my doctor of her side and fraternity let him resolve that for himself for here he comes enter glister oh hast thou brought the trunk honest club i commend thy honest care here's for thy pains giving money i thank ye master doctor you are free and liberal still you'll command me nothing back nothing but commendations farewell exeunt club and apprentice your sweetheart geraldine is by this time cold of his hope to enjoy thee he's gone and a more equal and able husband shall my care ere long provide thee what clients have been here in my absence wife faith mouse none that i know more than an old woman that had lost her cat and came to you for a spell in the recovery i think egregious ignorance will go near to save this age their blindness takes me for a conjurer yesterday a justice of peace salutes me with a proffer of a brace of angels to help him to his footcloth some three days before stolen and was fain to use his man's cloak instead on t re-enter vile as a gentleman craves speech with you sir go in sweet wife and give my niece good counsel exeunt mistress glister and maria his name he will not tell it to me his countenance i can see nothing but his eyes the rest of him is so wrapped in cloak that it suffers no view admit him exit vile what should he be for a man enter lipsolve what master lipsolve is't you why thus obscured what discontent overshadows you a discontent indeed master doctor which to shake off i must have you extend your art to the utmost bounds you physicians are as good as false doors behind hangings to ladies necessary uses you know the very hour in which they have neither will to deny nor wit to mistrust faith now by the way when are women most apt shall i unbutton myself to you after the receipt of a purgation for then are their pores most open but what creature of a quarter is it hath drawn your head into the woodcock's noose a courtier nay by this flesh i am clean fallen out with them they have nothing proportionable oh i perceive then tis some city star that attracts your aspect lipsolve aside he knows by his art in plain terms a certain pothecary's wife upon my life master purges i smell you sir you may smell a man after a purgation indeed sir tis she now for that fame hath bruited you to be a man expert in necromancy i would endear myself to you for ever would you vouchsafe to let one of your spirits bring mistress purge into some convenient place where i might enjoy her i have heard of the like can you perform this 
with much facility i assure you but you must understand that the apparition of a spirit is dreadful and withal covetous and with no small sum of gold hired to such feats re-enter vile sir here's another gentleman muffled too that desires present conference with you walk you into that room i will bethink myself for your good and instantly resolve you exit lipsolve let the gentleman come in exit vile lipsolve in love with my vessel of ease come to me to help him to a morsel most affected by mine own palate no more but so i have shaped it the conceit tickles me enter goodgen sir as a stranger i welcome you what master gudgeon have i caught you i thought it was a gallant that walked muffled come let me behold you at full here are no sergeants man master doctor this my obscure coming requires an action more obscure and in brief this tis sir you are held a man far seen in nature's secrets i know you can affect many things almost impossible know then i love mistress purge and opportunity favours me not nor indeed is she so tractable as i expected if either by medicine or your art magical you can work her to my will i have a poor gallant's reward sir Gloucester aside that's just nothing but how sir would you have me to procure you access to mistress purge you never knew a physician abroad why by conjuration i tell you wherein you are said to be as well practised as in physic here's the best part of my present store to effect it giving money not a penny for myself but my spirits indeed they must be fed walk you by here while i think upon a spell gudgeon retires what mystery should this be lipsolve and gudgeon both in love with mistress purge and come to me to help him by art magic tis some gullery sure yet if my invention hold i'll fit them who's within there enter servant fetch me in all good haste two good whips i think you may have them not far hence exit servant Gloucester aside it shall be so now tell me master gudgeon does no man know of your love to mistress purge not a man by my gentry then sir no i'll effect it but understand withal the apparition will be most horrid if it appear in its proper form and will so amaze and dull your senses that your appetite will be lost and weak though mistress purge should attend it naked now sir could you name a friend with whom you are most conversant in his likeness should the spirit appear of all men living my conversation is most frequent with lipsalve the courtier tis enough i'll to my spirit Gudgeon retires, and Glister writes a few words. Are these whips come there? Enter servant with whips. Ready here, sir. Exit. Glister aside. So lie thou there. My noble gallants, I'll so firk you. Sir, my spirit agrees in lipsalve shape. To-morrow, twixt the hours of four and five, shall Mistress Purge be wrapped with a whirlwind into Lipsolve's chamber. That's the fittest place, for by the break of day Lipsolve shall be mounted and forsake the city for three days. So my spirit resolves me. Now, sir, by my art, at that very hour shall his chamber door fly open, into which boldly enter in this sort accoutred. Put me on a pure, clean shirt. Leave off your doublet, for spirits endure nothing polluted take me this whip in your hand and being entered you shall see the spirit in lips of shape in the self-same form that you appear speak these words here ready written giving a paper take three bold steps forward then whip him soundly who straight vanisheth and leaves mistress purge to your will ay but shall your spirit come armed with a whip too he shall but have no power to strike is this infallible have you seen the proof probatum upon my word i have seen the experience if it fail say i am a fool and no magician master doctor i would you had some suit at court by the faith of a courtier i would beg it for you fare you well sir i shall report of you as i find your charm and no otherwise sir 
Let me understand how you thrive. Exit, Goodgen. Ha, ha, ha! Now to my friend Lipsolve. I must possess him with the same circumstance, wherein I am assured to get perpetual laughter in their follies and my revenge. Exit. Re-enter Maria. Oh, which way shall I turn, or shift, or go, to lose one thought of care? No soothing hope gives intermission, or beguiles one hour of tedious time, which never will have end, whilst love pursues in vain my absent friend. Thou continent of wealth, whose want of store, for that it could not pease the unequal scale, of avarice givest matter to my moan, O dross, the level of insatiate eyes, the devil's engine and the soul's corrupter, thou playest the attorney against the lawful force of true affection, dost interpose a bar, twixt hearts conjoined cursed be thy seeds of strife whose progress chokes the natural course of life gerardine rises out of the trunk while maria retreats in alarm oh help 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 stay sweet maria i bring thee ample joy to check that sudden fear let thy sweet heart that constant seat of thy affection repay that blood exhausted from thy veins Oh, fear not, sweet wench, I am no apparition, but the firm substance of thy truest friend. Knowst thou me now? O oh, Geraldine, my love, what unheard-of accident presents thy unexpected self, and gives my heart matter of joy mixed with astonishment? I thought thou hadst been cabined in thy ship, not trunked within my cruel guardian's house. That cruelty gives fuel to desire for love suppressed fears like a raging fire which burns all obstacles that stop his course and mounts aloft the ocean in his source may easier hide himself and be confined than love can be obscured for in the mind she holds her seat and through that heavenly essence is near when far remote her virtual presence fills like the air all places gives delight hope and despair and heart against fell despite that worst of men thy cruel guardian may keep down a while but cannot dissipate what heaven hath joined for fate and providence gave me this stratagem to let him know that love will creep where tis restrained to go i apprehend the rest o oh rare conceit i see thy travel happily was feigned to win access which with small ease thou hast gained this trunk which he so greedily supposes contains thy substance as it doth indeed upon thy fair pretence in lieu of love bequeathed to me if death should stop the course this trunk i say he hugs sink thou or swim so he may feed his wolf that root of sin his avarice but heaven that mocks man's might gives this close means to insist upon our right ingenious spirit true oracle of love thou hast prevented me this was my plot whose end and scope i long to imitate with accents free and uncontrolled with fear does opportunity stand fair not now danger stands sentinel then i'll retire we must be cautelous he goes again into the trunk so so and time shall not oft turn his hour-glass ere i'll find place and occasion fitting to thy mind exit end of act two Act Three of The Family of Love by Thomas Middleton, Thomas Decker, and Lording Barry. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Act Three, Scene One Maria's Apartment. Enter Gerardine and Maria. The coast is clear and argus's wakeful eye securely sleep time turns to us his front come sweet maria of the auspicious hours let's take advantage with all my heart i do embrace the motion with thyself welcome sweet friend to liberty of air which now methinks doth prompt our breaths to move sweet accents of delight the joys of love how dost thou brook thy little ease thy trunk that trunk confines his chest this chest contains the unbounded speculation of our love 
incomprehensible grief joy hope and fears the affections of my mind are like these spheres which in their jarring motions do agree through the influence of love's sweet harmony are not inferior bodies here on earth produced and governed by those heavenly ones they are they jar you say yet in that strife maintain perpetual league why should their influence in rational souls be checked by erring sense or why should mutual love confirmed by heaven be infringed by men methinks tis most uneven thou arguest well maria and this with all that brutes nor animals do prove a thrall to such servility souls that are wards to gold opinion or the undue regards of broking men wolves that in sheepskin bands prey on the hearts to join the unwilling hands ruin fair stocks when generous houses die or propagate their name with bastardy sterility and barrenness ensue such forced love nor shall erroneous men pervert my settled thoughts or turn mine eye from thy fair object which i will pursue rich in thy love proud of this interview i'll suck these accents let our breaths engender a generation of such pleasing sounds to interchange delights o oh, my blood's on fire sweet let me give more scope to true desire what wouldst thou more than our mind's firm contract tut words are wind thought unreduct to act is but an embryo in the truest sense i am beleaguered i had need of sense you make me blush play fair yet above board hear me exemplify love's latin word together with thyself as thus hearts joined and more take a from thence then more is the perfect moral sense plural in manners which in thee do shine saint like immortal spotless and divine take em away or in beauty's name craves an eternal trophy to thy fame lastly take o in re stands all my rest which i in chaucer's style do term a jest you break all modest bounds away away so when men come behind do women say come come i say ay that's the word indeed men that come bold before are like to speed but who comes here monstrum horrendum my nostrils have the rank scent of knavery maria let's remove ourselves to the window and observe this piece of man's flesh scene closes scene two a street glister's house enter lipsalve disguised as gerardine and shrimp now mistress maria ward yourself if my strong hope fail not i shall be with you to bring to bring what sir some more of your kind faith boy that's my name i'll be sworn sir you have a good loose you let's fly at him apace i have shot fair and far off but now i hope to hit the mark indeed god save it but where's the sign why there that's a special thing to be observed i have heard talk of the gemini methink that should be a star favourable to your proceeding the gemini oh i apprehend thee that's because i am so like gerardine has not so boy as if you would spit out on his mouth sir you must needs be like him for you are both cut out of a piece but lord sir how you hunt this chase of love are you not weary indefatigable boy indefatigable fatigable quoth you you may call it leanable well enough for i am sure it is able to make a man lean tis my vocation boy we must never be weary of well-doing loves as proper to a courtier as preciseness to a puritan maria appears above gerardine concealing himself behind her shrimp aside love savaldi last a punk in this place sub intelligital boy i have spied my saint then down on your knees 
fly off lest she take thee for my familiar save thee sweet maria nay wonder not for thou thyself art wonder to see this unexpected gratulation whom do i see oh how my senses wander am not i hero art not thou leander gerardine aside thou'rt in the right sweet wench more of that vein a passion overcomes her tis the kindest soul oh excellent device it works it works boy it does indeed sir like the suds of an ale fat or a washing bowl joy not too much extremes are perilous o oh, weather-beaten love cicely go make a fire go fetch my ladder of ropes leander's come mark how prettily in her rapture she harps upon geraldine's travel let the ecstasy have end for i am geraldine geraldine aside the devil you are huh let me see my love so soon returned i never travelled farther than nine eyes my bruited journey was a happy project to cast a mist before thy jealous guardian who now suspectless gives some hope to attain my wished delight before pursued in vain ask if he strained not hard for that same project hast not that project overracked thy brain and spent more wit than thou hast left behind shrimp aside by this light she flouts him no wit is infinite i spent some brain thy love did stretch my wit upon the tenters Geraldine aside then it's like to shrink in the wetting it cottons well it cannot choose but bear a pretty nap i tender thy capacity a comfortable caudle cherish it but where's my favourite that i bid thee wear as pledge of my love now dost thou put him to it more tentous for his wit he's non plus quite i wear it sweet maria but on high days uh, preserve it from the tainting of the air aside what should i say uh, tis in my t'other hose how in your t'other hose he that i love shall wear my favour in those hose he has on lepsol aside fiends and furies block that i am shrimp aside in your t'other hose she talked of a ladder of ropes if she would let it down for my life he would hang himself in it in your t'other hose why those hose are in lavender besides they have never a codpiece but indeed there needs no ivy where the wine is good in your t'other hose i said you were too prodigal of wit expostulate no more grant me access or else i'll travel to the wilderness your only way go travel till you tire be rid and let a gull discharge the hire master the doctor the doctor where which way this way that way some way i heard him coming oh boy i am abused gulled disgraced my credit's cracked you know that's nothing you for a courtier oh i shall run beside myself no sir that's my office i'll run by your side oh, my brain is out of temper what shall i do take her counsel sir get a cullis to your capacity a restorative to your reason and a warming pan to your wit he comes he comes follow close boy let him not see us exeunt lepsolve and shrimp enter glister what more flutterers about my carrion more battery to my walls shall i never be rid of these petronel flashes as for my friend Geraldine, the wind of my rage has blown him to discover countries and let the sea purge his love away and him together i care not young wenches now are all of the hoy 
we that are guardians must respect more besides titles gold lace person or parts we must have lordships and manners elsewhere as well as in the man wealth commands all and wealth i'll have or else my minion shall lead apes in hell i must after this gallant too i know his rendezvous and what company he keeps exit now we must be abrupt retire sweet friend to thy small ease what more remains to do will consummate at our next interview so shall i bear my prison with pleasure look thou but big our cruel foe will yield and give to hymen the honour of the field exeunt above scene three a street before the meeting-house of the family of love enter mistress purge club carrying a link before her fie fie club go out t'other side the way thou colourest me on my wrath thou wilt make me an unclean member in the congregation if you be unclean mistress you may pure yourself you have my master's wear at your commandment but what am i then that does all the drudgery in your house thou'rt born to it why boy i can show thy indentures thou givest no other milk we know how to use all in their kind you are my better in bark and rind, but in pith and substance i may compare with you you are above me in flesh mistress and there's your boast but in my t'other part we are all one before god enter dry fat all one with me dost thou swear too why then up and ride whither away mistress purge to the family master dryfoot to our exercise what by night O oh lord ay sir with the candles out too we fructify best in the dark the glance of the eye is a great matter it leads us to other objects besides the right indeed i think we perform those functions best when we are not thrall to the fetters of the body the fetters of the body what call you them the organs of the body as some term them organs fie fie they have a most abominable squeaking sound in mine ears they edify not a whit i detest them i hope my body has no organs to speak more familiarly mistress purge they are the senses the sight hearing smelling taste and feeling ay marry marry said i lord what words are that in my mouth you speak now master dryfoot but yet let me tell you where you are too this feeling i will prove to be neither organ nor fetter it is a thing a sense did you call it ay a sense why then a sense let it be i say it is that we cannot be without for as i take it it is a part belonging to understanding understanding you know lifted up the mind from earth if the mind be lift up you know the body goes with it also it descends into the conscience and there tickles us with our works and doings so that we make singular use of feeling and not of the rest not at that time therefore we hold it not amiss to put out the candles for the soul sees best in the dark you come to me now mistress purge enter purge behind nay i will come to you else master dryfoot these senses as you term them are of much efficacy in carnal mixtures that is when we crowd and thrust a man and a woman together purge aside what so close at it i thought this was one end of your exercise by our lady i think there's small profit in this i'll wink no more for i'm now tickled with a conceit that it is a scurvy thing to be a cuckold i commend this zeal in you mistress purge i desire much to be of your society do you indeed blessing on your heart are you upright in your dealings <laughs> yes i do love to stand to anything i do though i lose by it in truth i deal but too truly for this world you shall hear how far i am entered in the right way already first i live in charity 
and give small alms to such as be not of the right sect i take under twenty the hundred nor no forfeiture of bonds unless the law tell my conscience i may do it i set no pot on a sundays but feed on cold meat dressed a saturdays i keep no holy days nor fasts but eat most flesh of fridays of all days of the week i do use to say inspired graces able to starve a wicked man with length i have amen adabs and abrahams to my godsons and i chide them when they ask me blessing and i do hate the red letter more than i follow the written verity purge aside is clergy these are the rudiments indeed master Dryfoot. nay i can tell you i am or will be of the right stamp purge aside a poxious stamp then learn the word for your admittance and you will be much made on by the congregation ay the word good mistress purge a brother in the family enough i have my lesson purge aside so have i mine a brother in the family i must be a familist to-day i'll follow this gear while tis on foot if faith then shore up your eyes and lead the way to the goodliest people that ever turned up the white of the eye give me my book club put out thy link and come behind us dryfat knocks at the door of the meeting-house who's there two brothers and a sister in the family mistress purge dryfat and club enter the house then purge knocks at the door who's there a familiar brother here's no room for you nor your familiarity how no room for me nor my familiarity why what's the difference between a familiar brother and a brother in the family oh i know i made ellipsis of in in this place where it should have been expressed so that the want of in put me clean out or let me see may it not be some mystery drawn from arithmetic for my life these families love no subtraction take nothing away but put in and add so much as you will and after addition follows multiplication of a most pharisite hypocritical crew well for my part i like not this family nor indeed some kind of private lecturing that women use look to it you that have such gadders for your wives self-willed they are as children and i faith capable of not much more than they peevish by custom naturally fools i remember a pretty wooden sentence in a preamble to an exercise where the reader prayed that men of his coat might grow up like cedars to make good wainscot in the house of sincerity would not this wainscot phrase be writ in brass to publish him that spake it for an animal why such wooden pellets out of earthen trunks do strike these females into admiration hits em home sometimes perhaps in at one ear and out at t'other and then they depart in opinion wiser than their neighbours fraught with matter able to take down and mortify their husbands well i'll home now and bring the true word next time i shall expect my wife anon red up with zeal and big with melting tears and this night i do expect as her manner is she will weep me a whole chamber pot full no quarlipedes do i cast pills abroad tis no matter what i say i talk like apothecary as i am i have only purged myself of a little choler and passion and am now armed with a patient resolution but how to put my horns in my pocket no what wise men bear is not for me to scorn 
tis an honourable thing to wear the horn exit scene four lipsalve's chamber enter lipsalve without his doublet a whip in his hand fortune devil's turd in thy teeth i'll turn no more thy wheel art is above thy might what though my project with mistress maria failed more ways to the wood than one there's variety in love it is believed i am out of town my door is open the hour is at hand all things squared by the doctor's rule and now i look for the spirit to bring me warm comfort to clothe my nakedness and that is mistress purge the cordial of a familist and come quickly good spirit or else my teeth will chatter for thee scene shuts scene five before lipsalve's chamber door enter gudgeon without his doublet a whip in his hand o oh, the naked pastimes of love the scourge of dullness the purifier of uncleanness and the hot house of humanity i have taken physic of master purge any time this twelve months to purge my humour upon his wife and i have ever found her so fugitive from exercise to exercise and from family to family that i could never yet open the close stool of my mind to her so that i may well say with ovid hey mahai quod nullis amma est medicabilis herbis now am i driven to prove the violent virtue of conjuration if it hit and that I yerk my familist out of the spirit, I'll hang up my scourge stick for a trophy, and then paradise my thoughts. Though the doctor go to the devil, tis no matter. Ha! <laughs> Let me see. Lipsalve's door open and himself out of town. Excellent doctor, soothsaying doctor, oraculous doctor. Enters the chamber. Scene six. Lipsalve's chamber. Lipsalve discovered as before. Glister watching above. Glister aside. I have taken up this standing to see my gallants play at barriers with scourge sticks for the honour of my punk. Enter Gudgeon. And in good time I see my brave spirit shining in bright armour, nakedly burning in the hell fire of lechery, and ready for the hot encounter. Sound trumpets, the combatants are mounted. The apparition? Mistress Purge peers through him. I see her. The spirit appears. But he might have come sooner. I am numbed with cold. A shivering ague has taken away my courage. Glister aside. They are afraid one of another. Look how they tremble. The flesh and the devil strengthen him. Ha, ha, ha. Has he no cloven feet? What a laxative fever shakes me! Will he not carry me with him to hell? Well, I must venture. Clog Mathos! My cue! Clog Mathos! My cue! Garazin! Garagas! Garazinos! Tontetufon? Testetophase? With, with a, a whirly twinos. twinos. They lash one another. Hold, hold, hold. Gog's nouns, Gog's blood. A pox, a plague, the devil take you. Truce, truce, I smart, I smart. Glister aside. Ha, ha, ha. Oh, for one of the hoops of my Cornelius tub. I must needs be gone. I shall burst myself with laughing, else magic hath no such rule. Men cannot find lust ever better handled in his kind. Exit above. What art thou? With the name of Jove I conjure thee. With any name saving the whip, I'll know more of that conjuration. A plague on Speak, art not a spirit in the likeness of my friend Lipsalve that should transform myself to Mistress Purge? How? A spirit? I hope spirits have no flesh and blood, and I am sure thou hast drawn blood out of my flesh with the spirit of thy whip. Then shall we prove to be honest girls, and the doctor an errant knave? 
a plague upon him for a glister he has given our loves a suppositor with a recumbentibus i'll tell thee sirrah tell not me let me prevent thee the wind shall not take the breath of our gross abuse we feel the gullery therefore let us swear by our naked truths and by the hilts of these our blades our flesh tamers to be revenged upon that paraperopandentical doctor that pocky doctor agreed we'll cuckold him that he shall not be able to put his head in its doors and make his precise puritanical and peculiar punk his pothecary's drug there a known cockatrice to the world if report catch this knavery we have lost our reputations for ever wherefore let's be secret ill tax we women of credulity when men are gulled with such gross foppery come let us in and cover both our shames this conjuration to the world's a novelty gallants turned spirits and whipped for lechery exeunt scene seven maria's apartment enter maria geraldine come forth maria calls those ribs shall not enfold thy buxom limbs one minute longer the cincture of mine arms shall more securely keep thy soul from harms gerardine coming out of the trunk what heavenly breath of fitonessus power that raised the dead corpse of her friend to life prevails no less on me for even this urn the figure of my sad requiem gives up my bones my love my life and all to her that gives me freedom in my thrall be brief sweet friend salute and part in one for niggard time now threats with eminent danger our late joy scope thy earnest then of love ere soul have compassed half the signs i fear will show a blushing fault but twas thine aim to force consent in him that bars thy claim love solves that fault let time our guilt reveal i'll ne'er deny my deed my hand and seal the elements shall lose their ancient force water and earth suppress the fire and air nature in all use a preposterous course each kind forget his likeness to repair before i'll falsify my faith to thee the humorous body's elemental kind shall sooner lose the innate heat of love the soul in nature's bounds shall be confined heaven's course shall retrograde and leave to move ere i surcease to cherish mutual fire with thoughts refined in flames of true desire these words are odors in the sacred shrine of love's best deity the marriage god longs to perform these ceremonious rites which terminate our hopes till mine grow full i'll use that intercourse amongst my friends that erst i did then in the height of joy i'll come to challenge interest in my boy till then farewell you'll come upon your cue doubt not of that then twenty times adieu exeunt end of act three Act Four of the Family of Love by Thomas Middleton, Thomas Decker, and Lording Barry. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or how to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Act Four, Scene One, A Street Before the Meeting House of the Family of Love. Enter Lipsolve, Goodgen, Shrimp and periwinkle come boys our clothes boys and what is the most current news periwinkle faith sir fortune has favoured us with no news but what the peddler brought from norfolk is there nothing stirring at court shrimp faith there is sir but nothing new good wag faith thou smellest somewhat of a courtier though thou mother was a citizen's wife off with that filthy great band nay quick on with your robe of sanctity nay suddenly man and why must we shift ourselves into this demure habit if impossible to be of the family and keep our own fashion tut man 
the name of a gallant is more hateful to them than the sight of a corner cap hadst thou heard the protestations the wife of a bellows mender made but yesternight against gallants thou hadst for ever abjured crimson breeches she swore that all gallants were persons inferior to bellows menders for the trade of bellows making was very aerial and high and what were men and women but bellows for they take wind in at one place and do evaporate at another evaporate was her very phrase methinks her phrase flew with somewhat too strong a vapour nay she proves farther that all men receive their being chiefly from bellows without which the fire burns not without fire the pot seethes not the pot not seething powdered beef is not to be eaten of which she then averred our nation was a great devourer and without which they could neither fight for their country abroad nor get children at home for said she powdered beef is a great joiner of nerves together what answer madest thou marry that i thought a board was a greater joiner of nerves together than powdered beef with that she protested that a board was an instrument of the devil and as she had proved that bellows menders were of god's trade so boards were of the devil's trade for and thereupon she blew her nose the devil and boards did both live by the sins of the people no more mistress purge is at hand vanish boys away exeunt shrimp and periwinkle make haste before jove she'll be with us ere we can be provided for her they retire enter mistress purge club carrying a link before her advance your link club at what time wert thou bound club at guttide hollentide or candletide i was bound indeed about midsummer and when hath thy apprenticeship end at mickletide next so i take it they say club you fall very heavy on such you love not you never learnt that of me indeed mistress i must confess my fallen is rustic gross and butcher-like mary yours is a pretty foolish light court-like falling yet believe me my master smells somewhat too gross of the purgation he wants tutoring and why i pray my master being set last night in his shop comes master dr glister as his manner is squirtin in suddenly and after some conference tells my master that by his own knowledge you were young with child to which my master replied why master doctor will you put me to more charges yet thou art a fool and that my husband spake as wisely as if the master of his company had spoke he knows doctors have receipts for women which makes them most apt to conceive and he promising he administered the same lately to me thereupon spake it lead on with your link art ready ready then speak pitifully look scurvily and dissemble cunningly and we shall quickly prove two of the fraternity advancing with goodgen benediction and sanctity love and charity fall on mistress purge sister of the family and what i pray be you two two newly converted from the rags of christianity to become good members in the house of the family who i pray converted you master dryfad the merchant and from what sins hath he converted you from two very notorious crimes the first was from eating fish on fridays and the second from speaking reverently of the clergy but he resolved as your talent in edifying young men went far beyond his enter purge behind a talent i have therein i must confess nor am i very nice at fit times to show it for your better instructions therefore you must never hear after frequent taverns nor tap houses no masks nor mummeries no pastimes nor playhouses must we have no recreation yes on the days which profane lips call holy days you may take your spaniel and spend some hours at the docking pond 
what are we bound unto during the time we remain in the family during the light of the candle you are to be very attentive whispers which being extinguished how to behave yourselves i will deliver in private purge aside tis now come to a whisper what young families be these e faith i'll make one i'll trip you wife i sent your footing wife for galen writes paracelsus can tell Pothecries have brains and noses eke to smell we shall with much diligence observe it purge aside i fear i shall have small cause to thank that diligence but do your worst he that hath read five herbals in one year can find a trick which shall prevent this gear they are going follow purge close close and softly like a horse-keeper in a lady's matted chamber at midnight mistress purge knocks at the door of the meeting-house who knocks brethren and a sister in the family enter in peace mistress purge lipsall gudgeon and club enter the house brethren and a sister that's the word how beastly i was mistaken last day i should have said a brother in the family and i said a familiar brother for which i and my family were thrust out of doors but as titus silas of oberon bridge most learnedly was wont to say q d knox who's there a brother in the family enter and welcome purge enters the house scene two a street enter gerardine disguised as a porter thou sacred deity love thou power predominate more to be admired than able to be expressed whose orb includes all terrene joys which are all states which be paid to thy sacred throne as tribute fee their thoughts and lives like jove's so must thy acts endure no question why thy hidden facts the gods themselves obey heaven's synod holds no gods but what thy awful power controls the delphian archer proud with python's spoil at cupid's hand was forced to take the foil nor mars his star-like adamantine targe could free his warlike breast at cupid's charge and jove whose frown all mortal lives bereaves his marble throne and ivory sceptre leaves and in the likeness of a bull was seen as forced by him to bear the tyrian queen through neptune's watery kingdom if these submit my metamorphose is not held unfit and see in most wished occasion dryfat the merchant presents himself enter dryfat sir in the best of hours met my thoughts had marked ye out for a man most apt to do them the fairest of offices what art thou a welsh carrier or a northern landlord thou'rt so saucy it's possible sir my disguise should so much fool your knowledge how a northern landlord can you think i get my living by a bell and a clack dish by a bell and a clack dish how's that why by begging sir no you mean now master Geraldine, disguised and ashore Nay, then i smell a rat master dryfat shall i repose some trust in you will you lay by a while your city's precise humour will you not deceive me if i deceive your trust the general plague seize me that is may i die a cuckold and i say thou shalt die a true citizen if thou conceal it and thus in brief it stands with thy knowledge how seriously i have and do still affect maria now sir i have so wrought it that if thou couldst procure me a fellow that could serve instead of a crier i myself would play placket the parator and summon dr glister and maria to appear at thy house and as i play the parator so wouldst thou but assume the shape of a proctor i should have the wench thou the credit 
and the whole city occasion of discourse this nine days how's this how's this i should procure a fellow to play the crier and i myself should play the proctor but upon what occasion should they be summoned upon accusation that dr glister should get maria his niece with child and have bastards in the country which i have a trick to make probable and now i recall it to memory i heard somewhat to that effect last night in master beardbush the barber's shop but how will this sort who shall accuse him refer that to me i say be that my care all shall end in merriment and no disgrace touch either of their reputations then take both word and hand tis done club mr spurge's prentice shall be the crier o oh, my most precious dryfat may none of thy daughters prove vessels with foul bungholes or none of thy sons hogsheads but all true and honourable dryfats like thyself well master geraldine i hope to see you a familist before i die that's most likely for i hold most of their principles already i never rail nor calumniate any man but in love and charity i never cozen any man for any ill will i bear him but in love and charity to myself i never make my neighbour a cuckold for any hate or malice i bear him but in love and charity to his wife and may those principles fructify in your weak members <laughs> i'll be gone and with the most quick dexterity provide you a crier to-morrow at my house said you they should appear be that the time most honour dry fat but be this known to none most love sir save club or to some other whom your judgment shall select as a fit person for our project thus enough time out of sight exit maria thou art mine earth's perfection and nature's glory woman of what an excellency if her thoughts and acts were squared and levelled with the first solicitude of her creation to enjoy a creature whose dishevelled locks like gems against the repercussive sun gives light and splendour whose star-like eyes attract more gazes love to see their remove than the titanian god when aegean's hill in mounts and triumph a skin more pure and soft than is the silkworm's bed teeth more white than new-fallen snow or shining ivory is happiness sought by the gods themselves celestial venus born without a mother be thou propitious thee do i implore not vulgar venus heaven's scorn and mars is whore exit scene three a room in glister's house enter mistress glister and maria good aunt quiet yourself ground not upon dreams you know they are ever contrary minion minion coin no excuses i grant dreams are deceitful but a true judgment grounded upon knowledge never fails what have not i observed the rising and falling of the blood the coming and going of the countenance your qualms your unlacings your longings most evident tokens besides a more certain sign than all these too you know it i need not speak it nay i am as skilful in that point as my husband i can tell you aristotle speaks english enough to tell me these secrets body of me so narrowly looked to and yet fly out well i see maids will have it in spite of laws or locks that restrain them they will open do men what they can i see my fault appears simplicity hath no evasion tis bootless to deny where guilty blood cited by touch of shame runs through my veins and leaves my conscience stain even in my face forbear i do beseech you to publish my defame what i have done you shall not answer i must bear my own bear your own i marry there it goes what must you bear my sins forsooth your sins forsooth confess to me and go not about the bush you have been doing that's flat you have caught a clap that's round and answer me roundly to the point or else i'll square come whose act is it i cannot devise unless it be my husband's for none else had access to thee oh i am sure time has turned his bald side to thee and i do but wonder how thou tookest opportunity 
speak tell me now good aunt press me not let time reveal what you suspect for never shall my tongue confess an act that tends unto my wrong enter gerardine disguised as a porter will you not bolt i must have it out on you and will by your leave mistress passion of my heart what art thou no ghost forsooth though i appear in white no but a saucy knave i perceive by your manners none of that livery neither i am of the bearing trade forsooth you may see by my smock frock i would say i am if it please you of the spick and span you set up company of porters here's my breastplate and besides our own arms we have the arms of the city to help us in our burdens ecce signum here's the cross and the sword of justice and good pewter i can tell you which grows as current with us as better metal what's your name sir nicholas nebulo there's but a straw's breadth between that and the arms tis in the back side of the cross here and well known in the city for an ancient name and an honest ain't like your worship you are none of the twelve are you no forsooth but one of the twenty-four orders of knaves i thought so sirrah you're a rascal to come thus bluntly into my house with your dirty start-ups get you without doors like a filthy fellow as you are a place more fit for you oh good words mistress i may be warden of my company for aught you know and for my bluntness we have a clause in our charter to warrant that for as we bear so likewise we may be born with and have free egress and regress where our business lies and what's your business here i have a letter and please you to master doctor mistress glister taking the letter from whence that i cannot show your worship but i had it of curto the carrier whose lawful deputy i am leave your scraping sirrah fie how rank the knave smells of grease and taps droppings gerardine coughs and spits <coughs> what are you rheumatic too with a vengeance yes indeed mistress though i be but a poor man i have a spice of the gentleman in me master doctor could smell it quickly because he's a gentleman himself i must to the diet and that is tobacco at the alehouse i use another physic for it did ever such a peasant defile my floor or breathe so near me if face sirrah you would be bummed for your roguery if you were well served i am bummed well enough already mistress look here else so reverence in your worship master doctor's lips are not made of better stuff what an impudent rogue is this sirrah be gone i say i would be rid of you be rid of me i shall gallop then you mistake me forsooth i am a footpost i do not use to ride i think the rascal be humorous or drunk well i will read the letter and send him packing or else he will spew or do worse before me fie on him i think he will infect me with some filthy disease reads the letter gerardine aside or else i lose my name mistress glister what's here reads your poor nurse thomasine tweedles for my life now shall i find out my husband's knavery i have so long suspected gerardine aside she begins to nibble twill take if faith mistress i see some discontentment in your looks Carol befits so delicate a spirit be frolic wench for he that is so near thee has been much nearer that accent sounds sweet music tis my love that tongue breathes life into my lifeless spirits Geraldine, o oh, rapture why thus disguised no more be mute thus must i very forms to bring our cares to end her jealousy ensues this drift which if it take true scope love's joy comes next be fearless in that hope tis so Redsbane. i have it it wrecks on it torments me here it is reads woe worth the time that ever i gave suck to a child that came in at the window god knows how oh, villainous lecher yet if you did but see how like the pert little red-headed knave is to his father 
damnable doctor a bastard in the country and another towards here i am out of doubt this is his work you are an errant strumpet incest fornication abomination in my own house intolerable oh for long nails to scratch out his eyes are the breaches to fight with him out of my sight queen thou shalt to bridewell oh i shall be mad with rage oh then you shall go to bedlam hence you slave i must have a penny you must pay me for my pains the devil pay thee oh that's the doctor but he wants his horns oh but i'll furnish him ere long if i live Gerardine, aside it works as i would wish farewell maria the storm once past fair weather ever after exit was ever woman so moved but you shall be talked withal and for mine old fornicator he shall have it as hot as coals in faith he is stuff indeed come minx come there's law for you both have i found your knavery if i wink at this let me be stone blind or stoned to death bear this and bear all Exeunt. scene four a street enter Lepsolve, gudgeon shrimp and periwinkle our hopes are crossed sure there's some providence which countermands libidinous appetites for what we most intend is counterchecked by strange and unexpected accidents for by disguise procuring full access nay ready to have seized the expected prize the candle out steps twixt my hopes and me some peasant groom possessed and full enjoyed that sweet for which our vigilant eyes have watched and in one moment frustrates all our hopes upon my life we are bewitched the greasy rascal that first sees mistress purge by the last reflection of the light appeared to my sight not much unlike her husband the court's gall the city's plague and europa's sea form be his perpetual crest whatever he was to lose mistress purge for lack of dexterity is a disgrace insalvable the like opportunity will never present itself it was an egregious grief i must confess to see a knave slip betwixt us both and take occasion by the foretop but since these projects have had so star cross events let's lay some plot how to revenge our late disgrace on the doctor by making him cuckold enter purge agreed but what melancholy sir with acrostic arms now comes from the family purge the apothecary my prithee let's step aside and hear the issue of this discontent they retire with the two pages oh the misery of married men's estate Lipsolve aside he begins very pitifully oh women what are many of you Lipsolve aside why disease to bachelors and plagues to married men o oh, marriage the rage of all our miseries my wife is a dissembling strumpet gudgeon aside so is many a man's besides yours and what of that i would have a law that all such which pray little should instantly be married for them would they pray continually if it were but to be rid of their wives Lipsolve aside this is a charitable request and surely would pass the lower house surely if affliction can bring a man to heaven i cannot see how any married man can be damned i have made myself a plain cuckold Goodgen, aside pile on ye won't you had you not been so manable here a son would have saved you that labour what shall i do in this extremity had i but witness of the fact i would make her answer it before authority 
this is my wedding ring tis it i know it by the posy i took this from her finger in the dark and she was therewith very well pleased were not this trow a sufficient testimony she knows not that it was myself got so near her i will take counsel well little know bachelors the miseries they undergo when they prostrate themselves to women Lipsolve coming forward with goodgen oh most true master purge little knows a man what elements he is to pass when he puts his head under a woman's girdle your passion master purge is overheard and plain tale to tell we were eye-witnesses of your wife's treachery and if need be will be ready to depose as much what master lipsalve and master gudgeon are you disguised testimonies nay then revenge look big elf and fairy help to revenge the wrong pothecary why now he speaks like himself get me a parator for her straight conceal the ring my little purge let not thy wife know thou hast it until she comes to her trial enter dry fat and geraldine disguised as an apparitor your advices are very pithy therefore in private let me disclose my intent off boys purge lipsolve and goodgen retire what dost thou think of thy master is he not a regal i think he will swallow and pocket more disgraces than large conscience lawyer fees in a michaelmas term thy master my honest shrimp comes not much short of a fool too but that he is a courtier draw somewhat near and overhear their conference retires with periwinkle this shape of the crier must club to-morrow as soon are you fitted for pop in the proctor excellent and have spent some study in the mystical cases of venery i can describe how often a man may lie with another man's wife before he come to the white sheet how long is that why till he be taken tardy how long all womankind may by the statute profess and swear they are maids and how long is that why till their bellies be so big that it cannot be no longer concealed <laughs> but come forward toward glisters it must be so let the summer tickle her you shall bring in these allegations and let us alone to swear them advancing with purge and goodgen who's this master dry fat opportunely met sir and with us so fast the news the news faith gentlemen i think to relate for news what i hear of dr glister would come stale to your hearings oh the getting of his niece with child tut that's apparently known to all the company but in the name of jupiter what art thou or from whence camest thou why sir i come from compassing the corners of the land of what trade in the name of pluto of the devil's trade for i live as he does by the sins of the people in brief sir i am placket the parator as the devil would we have my noble parator instant employment for thee a grey groat is to be purchased without sneaking my little sumner where's thy quorum nomina my honest placket sir according to the old ballot my quorum nomina ready have i with my pen and ink horn hanging by her name sir her name it's no more but so i have most right to her name her name master placket is my wife mistress purge sir to what place dost thou belong to the commissioners which sit to-morrow at master dryfoot's upon the crimes of dr grister and others sits there a commission dry fat now for the love of lechery let's have mistress purge summoned thither she makes my quorum nomina reasonable fool my grant sir and she shall appear there upon the crime of concupiscence 
Is not that your meaning? Yes, my honest pariser. Here's thy fee. Giving money. Enter Mistress Purge and Club. And see how happily it succeeds. Mistress Purge is new come from the family. Let us step aside whilst Placket the Parator gives her a summons. Content. To her, Placket. But see for the bribery of twelve pence you strike her not out of your quorum nomina. Fear not, sir. Lipsolve, Goodgen, Purge, and Dryfat retire. Forward a pace, Club. Your name I take to be Mistress Purge, fair gentlewoman. I am Mistress Purge. Purge's wife, the apothecary. What of that? Dryfat, aside. Now you shall see him tickle her with a quorum nomina. I cite you by virtue of my quorum nomina to make your personal appearance by eight of the clock in the morrow morning before certain commissioners at Master Dryfat's house to answer to an accusation of a crime of concupiscence. To answer a crime of concupiscence? What's that, I pray? Why, it is to answer a venereal crime for having carnal copulation with other besides your husband. What are you, I pray? By name Plackett, by trade a parator. And must I answer, say you, to a venereal crime? I tell thee, Plackett the parator, I am able to answer thee or any man else in any venereal crime they'll put me to. And so, tell your commissioners. If you fail your appearance, the penalty must fall heavy. If it's fall never so heavy, I am able to bear it, and so set forward, Club. Exit with Club. Lipsolve, coming forward with the others. Excellent, if faith. After your wife, Purge. Read, Plackett, thy quorum nomina, my noble groatmonger. Exit Purge. Silence. The first that marches in this fair rank is Strom the Feltmaker, for getting his maid with child and sending his prentice to Bridewell for the fact. Whip the beetle for letting a punk escape for a night's lodging and bribe of ten groats. Bat the bellman for lying with a wench in a tail stall at midnight when he should be performing his office. And tipple the tapster for deflowering a virgin in his cellar. Dr. Glister, his wife, Maria, Mistress Purge, these be the complete number. Now dissolve, and each to his occasion till to-morrow morning. Exeunt severally. End of Act 4.